This is KPPQ LP Ventura, 104.1 FM, and we're in the women's room where we appreciate and support each other. I'm your host, Kathleen Good. My guest today is Jeanette Sanchez Palacios, who is a newly appointed city council member for Ventura's District 4. We're so happy to have you here today, Jeanette. Thank you, Kathleen. Happy to be here. I asked Jeanette here to talk about local government, her appointment to the city council, her roots in immigration and what that means to her, as well as her leadership doctorate and the importance of educational policy. And let's throw in a little on democracy as well. Uh, So with our expansive agenda, Jeanette, we'd better get going. Let's jump right in with your immigrant story because your American dream story flows from that. Now, why did your parents leave Guatemala? Um, So first of all, again, thanks for having me. I'm happy to be here. Uh, My story uh, in the United States starts when I was four years old. Uh, That is when my mom decided to bring my siblings and I, I'm the youngest of three, um, to come to the United States. Um, Back then, um, Guatemala was facing the civil war, was facing a lot of gang violence. And my mom was very concerned, obviously having three young children, um, uh, just very concerned for our safety, for our family's well-being. And so decided that um, you know, you, you hear uh, the talks about the American dream and how America is uh, made up of immigrants and it's, it's the land of opportunity. So I, I know she believed that in her heart and decided to take that route um, and brought us, you know, I was four, my brother was six and my sister was eight when we oh, came to the United wow. States. So, so we were little. <laughs> yeah, you were. So you've grown up American, really. I have. Um, I've only gone back twice uh, to Guatemala, and that was when we were uh, getting our citizenship, you know, in order. Uh Uh, So that's when we returned. I I see. So I'd like to congratulate you on your recent appointment to the Ventura City Council. Thank you. Could you put us in the picture as to how you came to be appointed? What is the process? What did you have to do? Yeah, of course. Um, So with this, with the appointment through the city of Ventura, um, it was an option that the city had. Um, We are a charter city. And so in um, our ordinance, charter ordinance, it calls for, if there is a vacancy, it calls for a special appointment process. Uh, if the council members at that point cannot, um, there's no consensus on a specific individual to a point, then it, then it prompts a special election. And so for me, uh, there were 18 candidates, I believe, to start. And then the day of the interview, there was 14 of us that actually showed up and went through the interview. Two of them, I believe, were disqualified because there's certain, you have to live in the district, you have to be at least 18, and obviously you have to be a U.S. citizen. Uh Um, And so two were disqualified, and then two didn't show up the day of the interview. And the interview process itself was pretty much all day. Wow. With 14 candidates, uh, they... The, the council decided to interview all of us on the same day. And based on what they heard that day, they then deliberated to see if there was a, you know, a applicant that they wanted to appoint. And when they decided to appoint me that day, um, they swore me in right away. And my first council meeting, that was on a Saturday, Saturday, February 20th. Um, and my first council meeting was supposed to be the Monday, the following Monday, but then the internet broke. Oh, and we, no. had to, we had to reschedule our council meeting to that Wednesday. So I had literally days to get ready for my first council meeting, which had some heavy agenda items for me to vote on that day. Oh, wow. So how did you learn so much about government uh, that you could answer in such a way that they chose you? 
You know, um, I've been fortunate to have great mentors. Uh, clearly, I didn't accomplish this by myself. Um, I've been also working for many years in the field of politics and government, local government, state government. I'm the district director uh, for the California State Assembly. I've been doing that for more than 10 years now. And, um, and so I know the importance of local government and the role that local government plays in our lives as individuals. And so for me, um, it was talking to the different people in the community to learn about the issues that they cared about, to also learn about the, where the city was at the time, um, what were some of the most important issues that would be coming up for me to consider and so it, it really was um, a networking uh, opportunity, but also reaching out to the mentors that I've had for many years to help me prepare for that interview. Um, we did have the questions ahead of time, uh, but that morning. So we didn't know what we were going to be asked. Oh. Uh, you kind of just had to gauge from the issues that were out there that have been important for a while for the city. And you had to kind of guess, I think they'll ask me this, um, but we didn't get the questions uh, until the morning of. And, and by then, you know, I, I, I had already prepared, I had studied, I'd had, you know, come up with sample questions myself and, and had answered them and, and, you know, and you get feedback from people. And so that's kind of how I, you know, got ready for, for the uh -huh. interview and just made sure that I had all my ducks in a row. <laughs> I say it sounds pretty rigorous. I said it was like a big exam. Yeah, really. Now, some citizens wanted a special election to be held. So mm -hmm. why did the city open the position up to applicants? Yeah, and, um, and I know that uh, I heard a lot from different constituents, specifically in District 4, who wanted to have a special election. Um, like I said earlier, the the city we are a charter city, so we are we are different than a regular city, if you will. Oh, okay. we have certain ordinances and certain charters that we have to follow, and so it's within our charter that states um, if a vacancy uh, opens, then the council is supposed to, you know, first go through an appointment process. If there's no consensus there, then that prompts a special election. And right. in addition to that, I think uh, I remember hearing some of the council members expressing concern about the cost of a special election. Um, it would have been somewhere around 100,000, if not more, just to put um, an election forward um, that would have had another election coming up right away. And then we wouldn't have been able to have an election until November of this year. Uh -huh. um, and then the seat is up. A year later, so there's a, there was just a lot of things that the the that had a lot of just layers to it. If we were to do a special election, um, and in the end, they were able to have a consensus on a candidate or an applicant, and that's what um, didn't prompt a special election. So it sounds like a, a very good, a very wise decision. Yeah. Now, uh, talk a little bit about being a public servant. Uh, with your work for the state. What do you do and explain why you see it as giving back? You've already mentioned that you, you know, um, work for the state. So yeah. just elaborate a bit more on that for our listener. Sure, so as a district director, um, I work for a specific um, elected official um, that represents a portion of Ventura County. We uh, essentially are the office on the ground that handles constituent inquiries. So anything from, you know, DMV that, especially during the pandemic, people's licenses were either expiring or their permits um, were due. We help navigate the system for these constituents to help them um, get their driver's license or get an extension for their driver's license. Um, another way that we continue to help is with unemployment. A lot of um, our constituents who, because of the pandemic, lost their job or had to quit their job because kids weren't in school and they had to stay home and went on unemployment. Uh, small business owners whose businesses were interrupted with the pandemic, all these individuals, we've had to be the middle person for them 
to help them get answers for their unemployment. It's been very difficult that the Department of Unemployment has had a lot of um, snags, if you will. Um, it, it, it is a, a system that needs a lot of updating. And so with, with having hundreds and thousands of people applying for unemployment, it, it like broke the system, if you will. Oh, and wow. so as a state agency and as a district director, our role was to help pick up those pieces and help be the connector for our constituents who weren't getting responses or weren't even sure what to fill out, how to fill it out. And, um, and so we, we play that middle, you know, connecting role wow. to help um, get our constituents answers. Oh, wow. Well, I'm glad to know that. So if I have a problem, I could. <laughs> yeah. So any, any state agency, I just mentioned those two because those are the most popular calls that we get, but anything to do with the secretary of state, anything uh -huh. to do with, um, you know, public health, uh, state level, any uh, state agency that folks might be needing help with, um, that, is, that is what we do. We help people uh, navigate the system. Oh, wow. And you uh, explain this to me as uh, your way of giving back by doing this kind of work. Yeah, you know, for me, um, one of the things that my parents always instilled in us and always taught us, um, because we came to the United States for a better life, um, to the land of opportunity, if you will, um, it was always told that we're here to also give back. We're here to also um, not just take um, advantage of the system, if you will, um, but that we are here to be a part of the system and help give back. And so for me, um, my public service that I've been in for, geez, 15 plus years, um, it's been uh, a way for me to, to give back. Um, I have worked in, you know, in the political field for so long that I, through laws, through you know, helping advocate for different laws in, in the state, we've been able to help our community. And to me, that, that's been a way of just saying, here I am, I'm serving and I'm giving back um, just as my parents um, taught us to do. Oh, wow. So there is a kind of a negative perception that immigrants are here to get any service they can. Could you speak, you have a little bit, uh, to this misperception of some of our citizens? Yeah, you know, um, it's, it's, it's hard sometimes to hear those words um, I, that people think um, immigrants only come here to take advantage or to do you know to absorb some certain services and you know number one there there are some um undocumented uh there, there are some benefits that undocumented individuals just don't get they're not privy to that because they're undocumented um and and then there's um a lot of uh even folks who are undocumented or immigrants who work really hard to make ends meet to stay out of trouble, to um, give their children a, a better life, um, just like my parents did. And so I know firsthand, while yes, there are some that may take advantage of the system, there are many more who are working hard out there, just simply trying to get a better life. I think just like all of us, right? We all work hard right. for our goals and for to have a, a great quality of life. And that's all that, um, a lot of us are looking for, you know, my dad was a mechanic, my mom uh, cleaned houses, uh, she was a housekeeper, um, pretty much all her life. Um, they're both now um, older and retired, they don't work anymore. But um, they, they are now also citizens, and they vote and they take part of the democratic process that this country has, and that has afforded many of us. And, you know, my sister, volunteers at voting election polls every time there's an election and my brother served in the marines um you know as his way of of giving back as well and so for us it's it's always been about opportunities to serve and opportunities to show that we're grateful for what we've been able to have okay well, um, why is there sort of and and this was these were your words when we spoke um 
uh, previously, an understandable mistrust about government and elected officials. I wonder if you could speak to how you deal with this natural suspicion of government office holders. Yeah, you know, um, and <clears throat> and I don't I don't blame people sometimes um, because there there have been um, perhaps just a lot of experiences and where either something is promised or said it's going to be done and then the opposite is done. Um, and, you know, and, and I can't say it's, it's the fault of one or the other now that I am, uh, you know, in a public position um, because it's different once you're there, it's different once you're up there. Right. But I, I understand people, why people don't trust, um, uh, you know, elected officials um, because there, there has been, I think mainly at the federal and at the state level, just a lot of you know, corruption, whether political money or just decisions that were, you know, we hear it from different cities, we've heard it from different government organizations where um, you know, they were funding money inappropriately. And, and so when you hear of those stories, um, of course people mistrust. And when you run a campaign, um, you need money to, you know, do mailers, to call voters. Um, and sometimes the people who give you money, right, expect something in return. And so we, that, that's sort of the nature of the business. And so because all of that is involved, um, a lot of the times there's a, a conception that because you received money from a certain company or individual, then all of a sudden you're beholden to them. Um, and that may not necessarily be the truth, but that's just the assumption, the automatic assumption. Right. Well, we have to take a little break here and do a station ID. So uh, let's hold that thought. This is KPPQ LP Ventura, 104.1 FM. And we're in the women's room where we appreciate and support each other. I'm your host, Kathleen Good. My guest today is Jeanette Sanchez Palacios, who is a newly appointed city council member for Ventura's District 4. Jeanette is here to talk about local government, her appointment to the city council, her roots in immigration and what that means to her, as well as her leadership doctorate. And we're back. And we were just talking about uh, government officials and a natural suspicion of them. So um, I have another question about you know being a, an official. We um, often tend to vote for a personality, a party, or for a candidate because he or she favors one special interest thing that is personally important to us. What instead should voters be looking for in a candidate? Yeah, that's a that's a big question, Kathleen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> do the best you can. <laughs> no, I, you know, it's um, I I I always think it's great when um, new people, if you will, get involved, want to run for office, especially our younger <laughs> generation um, who want to get involved and and make changes. Right, I, I think that's always encouraging. That's always positive to see that. Um, but one of the things just from experience that I feel um, candidates should have is, is, I think, knowledge and um, knowledge of how the system works, uh -huh. understanding how it works, and, um, and, and being able to, to work with others. I think those two are, are very, very important because in the end, um, you know, I, I look at the state level, for example, in the assembly, right? While you elect one person of a particular party, um, if that person wins, they go to Sacramento to work with 79 other people to try to pass a law. So regardless of your party affiliation, you have to know how to work well with others and you have to be able to communicate and um, sit with others to be able to you know, pass your bills, right? Otherwise no one's gonna wanna help you. <laughs> Right. <laughs> um, and while on the local level, for example, city council, we don't have necessarily party designations. You still have to work, in my case, with six other individuals who make up the entire council 
to try to get decisions, to try to get to a decision and, and vote, right? And so, um, so being able to work with others is very important because then otherwise you isolate yourself, you're not able to have any cooperation to get anything done. Um, and then the other, I, you know, what I say by knowledge um, is you don't have to know everything. You don't have to know the process entirely, but you should certainly know how to navigate somewhat, you uh -huh. know, within that system. Um, city council operates differently than board of supervisors. Board of supervisors operates differently than state assembly and state assembly op operates differently than Congress. Uh -huh. And so it doesn't matter which office you could be running for a special district or water district. As long as I, I think, you know, the basics of how that board or that council or w w that seat that you're running for, as long as you have the basic knowledge of how to, you know, what is it that they do, you, you're going to want to know those basic things. Okay. That, that was very good. <laughs> what are some of your goals as a council member? So I, I think for me, one of my biggest goals um, or first goals was to ensure that my um, the people I represent felt heard. Um, we go back to uh, a lot of them not wanting an appointment, but they wanted a special election. And because we went with an appointment, um, a lot of folks might have felt like their voice was taken away. Um, and so I wanted to ensure that regardless of um, not being able to have had a special election, that I was going to be the best representative that they could have having me there. And so my goal was to respond to emails, uh, respond to calls, respond to inquiries um, as best and as soon as possible. Um, I'm not perfect at it. I have a full-time job, I go to school and I, I am not able to um, respond to council inquiries between my nine to five hours of work. So I had to, um, you know, get creative and I answer uh, council, if, you know, emails before nine or after five or during yeah. my lunch hour, which is right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, I had to get creative, but that, that was my number one goal is I wanted to um, have results for the constituents who are reaching out to me. I felt very um, just happy and, and satisfied when I was able to um, get a sidewalk fixed, for example, a pothole fixed um, wow. that a resident had reached out to me about, um, as well as like a, a tree trimming. And it sounds very minimal, but to our constituents, this is their everyday life because they might pass that pothole every single day, or they might pass that broken branch every single day. And so to be able to answer them and give them results, um, that, that to me was priority and continues to be priority. Okay, so you have a special interest in community college. In fact, you're the representative for the city for the uh, Ventura Unified District City School Liaison Committee. That's quite a, <laughs> a complicated uh, title there, which includes community college. So maybe you yeah. could explain that and then acquaint us with your special relationship to community college. Yeah, certainly. Um, so like you said, I am the uh, committee member liaison for Ventura Unified School District and the education um, world, <laughs> if you will, which includes community colleges for the city. And essentially what we are is um, we, we meet to discuss some of the educational issues in our, um, in our city. And uh, it could be anywhere from like career technical education to uh, how are we reopening schools during the pandemic? Uh, and I think for me, the community college uh, tie is very important because we have a lot of students that sometimes graduating high school or, or you know, when they're sophomores or juniors, they start thinking about what they're going to do after high school and they don't know. Our community colleges are a, a gem in helping our students just sort of transition into Con, you know, continuing their education and hopefully helping them find a, a place, right? Whether they want to further their education to a four-year university or college, or perhaps earn a certificate or, you know, transfer to, you know, career technical education instead. So I think um, 
I went to a community college myself. I lasted a long time at a community college. Mm-hmm. And when I first got to a community college, I had no idea what I wanted to do. I didn't know how to navigate that system. And so for me, you know, I eventually was able to, to transfer to UCLA, graduate. I earned my master's eventually from CSUN and now I'm in a doctoral program um, for higher education leadership. And I think my whole point of pursuing this special degree is because using my policy experience, I know that we can change things for our our students that can make it a more direct access to higher education, or that can help them find a, a, a more direct pathway to what they want to accomplish. And instead of spending years and years and trying to figure out, well, what is it that I want to do? And so through policy, we've been able to change some of the, you know, navigating process of, of continuing higher education. Okay, well, uh, thank you for explaining that. We're rapidly running out of time, but okay. I wanted to just have you address um, a couple more things about local government briefly. Sure. Uh, local government seems to me to be more important than ever. Do you see this as I do? Yes, I fully agree. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So uh, city council members uh, don't really affiliate with the national party. Uh, yeah. Is that correct? And why is this a good thing? Yeah, no, that is correct. We don't necessarily have um, our party affiliation next to our name when we have elections. And so um, I think that's for the better in, in so many ways because we, we represent everyone. We don't represent just one party or the next. Um, and so to me, having uh, whatever letter after your name or whatever letter affiliated with you uh, shouldn't be the only people you serve. You serve everyone and that's that's what we do on council. Okay, so where can constituents get in touch with you? They can certainly email me and um, it is a a long email, so I apologize. Do you want me to spell it out right here? Uh, yeah, just say it. Yeah. Okay. Um, so they can reach me on my um, city email at jpalacios at cityofventura.gov. Oh, okay. jpalacios at cityofventura.gov. That's yeah. not so bad. Well, <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jeanette, for coming in to tell your story and for sharing with your listener your work with policy goals and for giving back to our country. You can download the MyTuner app for KPPQ and listen to programming 24-7. This is KPPQ LP Ventura, 104.1 FM, and we're in the women's room where we appreciate and support each other. I'm your host, Kathleen Good.